to the dog. Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy here. Look at this beautiful day we have on the balcony. I thought to follow up our last video where I discussed um, where I discussed watering, how I kind of got in the proper swing of watering my Japanese black pines. I thought I would follow that up with feeding my Japanese black pines and uh, what it means when you have a dog in training. Uh, I have a few little pine trees in my um, bonsai collection. And whenever I first started uh, trying to grow the, the black pines, I was uh, concerned about what my success rate would be. I feel bad when something dies on my watch, no matter what it is. Um, so I, I didn't want to take these on and have them die on me right away or not at all, but I, I just didn't want to um, do something that would discourage me. So I was a little intimidated going in and that kind of kind of makes you freeze up a little. So the one that I was less frozen over was the one that actually did better, which was kind of eye-opening for me. And then over time, I kind of got the watering down. I thought, you know, going in, I thought, um, with the feeding and when to feed and what to use and the pest control and when to pest control and what to pest control and what I see people doing is decandling and when to decandle and why to decandle and then it looks like they're needle plucking and i see other people get these things and they just die so that seems like a lot to learn while you're trying to just figure out how to not make it die and you can be forgiven for saying why don't we just try to focus on what will ensure that the tree is still here tomorrow because we know we don't know everything so we're just going to so you kind of you know you focus on watering right so it was probably before i had a problem that i really started even thinking about feeding i was going to wait until i saw something until i saw something that was a result of of not being fed more than likely rather than be proactive and learn about uh feeding my idea was uh wait until something bites you and then turn your attention to that and learn about that and and that's not in hindsight it was pretty simple i already gave you uh my trick it's not really a trick but my advice on that would be those little pellets they look like they look like these guys when they're being used and when they come out of the packet they actually smell like mint which keeps the birds, will, they'll flip them around. I'll find them loose on the deck where the birds will have picked them and tossed them, but they won't eat them. Uh, I think that also explains why Frida, who is the ever watchful, uh, watchful dodger, uh, doesn't go for them either. They probably have the, some flavor that she's not really used to. But anyway, having said that, um, what we're looking at here is a collection of my smaller pines. And these are the ones that haven't, I got inspired growing these little, 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 little pines this way from from watching um, Kimi Bonsai in Japan and Bonsai Q uh, because they were folding up tiny little Shohan and Mames. And the typical way to grow a, um, a tiny little pine is to first let a pine tree get a trunk about that big around and have a candle coming out of the top of a one foot tree that's like four or five foot long and that's how you get a trunk that big around and then you chop it down to that small after you started working the roots back but trying to get tiny tiny little trees i'm trying to do this from uh start them small and keep them small approach and We've been doing that, but the, the uh, feeding for these guys, I'm just going to um, tell you what it is that I was reluctant to learn and uh, why I should have picked up on it sooner. 
and it's not really that complicated. What I use is um, BioGold. And why I use it is I can just take a few pellets and drop them and just drop them on the top of the soil. You'll also see people use those little plastic, those little plastic balls that open up and you can put something in it. A lot of times people who use bio gold, a lot of times, or you see those a lot of times it's bio gold what's in there. I'm not saying that everybody uses that, but it's pretty popular. And um, you'll also see people put those in tea bags and the difference is, like this guy, even when it's finally, uh, the soil looks pretty dry. And here you can see, I've got a little bit of a, kind of what looks like an oil slick going there. Where the, um, where those little cubes are breaking down. It does kind of leave a stain, but that's, that's just the stuff breaking down. And whenever I have started doing repottings, after I learned to use this, I'm starting to see a lot more mycorrhiza in my re, in my repot. So that part of it i'm still a firm believer in the process of mycorrhiza and um, i'm a big believer in that but if we were to look at these trees they they have um, they're in different stages of development this little tree i hope to keep small to some extent but we are allowing the roots to grow long in there and I'm going to watch it. I don't want it to get too big and that's one thing about growing in this big pot. Same with that guy. This guy, I hope to try to keep it small by going in this pot, but I also hope the roots to escape so that at some point I can tease this out. But what these trees here have in common is that they're all over potted. This guy, these two, all of these, they're over potted so that they can get fatter or grow more roots or grow more branches or, you know, thicken up. That's what they're doing. So that's why we're feeding it. We're feeding it to encourage, to encourage all of that. Right now, it is uh, well into the second week of June. And while these trees are still showing their uh, cubes, their little, their little bio gold cubes, some of the trees, well, most of the trees, most, not all, most of the trees that are in bonsai pots, uh, their, their little cubes have been taken away. And the reason they've been taken away is they've been roughly got picked up around June 1st because these are all small, small, small little black pines. For us here in the Bay Area, this this knowledge, this part of the knowledge is, is as per where you live. So here in the Bay Area of San Francisco, our candle cutting season, I think is, I think is around uh, June to uh, to early July uh, in some cases, but uh, the smaller the tree, the smaller you're going to want the needles. Proportionately speaking, the larger the bonsai tree, the more you can allow them to grow out. So on a larger um, imperial bonsai tree, big old huge grande bonsai tree you could cut those candles off early. But, see, now the point to all of that, the rest of the time, we're thinking, we're not so much thinking about candles. So on these trees, I will be doing my candle cutting later in the year. Later in the year, because they are smaller, smaller, bond, uh, smaller Japanese black pines. For that reason, since they're going to have their needles cut farther in the month of June, their uh, their cubes have been taken up early so that uh, the tree can live off of those. And then when we cut the candles on this, um, it won't have an abundance. It won't have an abundance of fertilizer and nutrients down there in the soil for it to grow a second batch of needles. So that means the ones that are not in confined pots, we don't necessarily 
We might cut the candle on them still to keep them small or to increase the number of back buds, but we, we will not necessarily have to uh, remove, their, remove their cubes. We can continue to feed one if it's not in the um, bonsai vortex yet. And the bonsai vortex to me starts whenever you put it in an actual pot that is a bonsai pot that is small to restrict its roots. Um, from that moment on, we are treating the root system and um, everything else in a in positioning in a bonsai way with uh, controlling the water and the nutrients and the amount of soil it has in a restricted pot. As long as we are um, wanting to grow mass or limbs or foliage or um, or ramification or uh, you know something like that whenever we're doing that we're going to be going with larger pots we're going to let the roots grow more we're going to let them grow fatter and let uh you know let all that other stuff we're trying to do happen we're just going to feed it right on and by right on i mean Ju uh, june july august right on around fall right on around to the following spring just right on around we can just continue to feed these little guys um all the while whereas the ones in the bonsai pots we won't be feeding uh those guys again until fall when their second flush of needles has come out and um come on focus when their second flush of needles has come out and is fully extended to whatever length they're going to be then it's okay to resume feeding again and at that point we can go through the winter and uh, the end of the fall and the winter uh end of the beginning of spring growing um new roots and fattening up the trunk and making make it you know re uh greening the tree back up in case it's it got a little yellow during its time away from all of that uh from all that fertilizer um so that's kind of we pick it back up in the fall and then we can do that again until spring and then in late spring early summer we stop again to do uh when it to about you know about 30 days you know 25 30 days before decandling if we're going to do that then we'll go ahead and stop um then we'll go ahead and stop feeding them to allow that the opportunity to make smaller to make smaller candles for us in the meantime the rest of the trees they can just keep chowing down now my other pines my uh ponderosas to make the ne needles smaller in those, we're first gonna go the other way. We're gonna feed them year round. We're gonna water them. We're gonna give them as much of everything they could possibly have. The results of that is going to be uh, more needles, more back budding, and they're going to be long, which will increase, you know, we'll, we're gonna give it one or two years of just feeding it year round, and the needles will get really, big the way big happy healthy ponderosas tend to do but all the while the roots will be still restricted to our bonsai pots so at some point the tree will reach a point where it cannot continue to make that larger amount of needles that bigger mass of needles and produce them at the same length at which it was doing and at that point, the tree starts making smaller needles on its own. We let those set in a year or so of that. And then we can start cutting back the ends a little bit to bring back any, to bring our growth, uh, our new growth that we had been uh, achieving during that time back to what to what's a reasonable, uh, a manageable level. And we will see those smaller needles and be able to, you know, that's how you do that with ponderosas these being single 
flush pines and this is not indicative of all single flush pines this is indicative of a few of them i forgot what the small list was but um you might check into that if you have a single flush japanese black pine i mean if you have a single flush pine tree these the the uh, black pines they are uh multi-flush or uh, two flush which is to say that if it lost all of its needles in the event of a hurricane that it has the ability during hurricane season to uh, regenerate that second flush of needles. And by holding back the fertilizer 30, starting 30 days before we cut the new candles, we're just going to limit its ability to grow long needles. And that's the point of holding back then. And then we can pick that back up. We can pick that back up in uh, early fall, like I said, but here's what, we might see a little yellowing um, because of the lack of uh, feeding. So that is one thing, that is one reason why we feed is it helps us to keep, uh, it greens up our little, it greens up our Japanese black pines whenever they're being fed. Now that fertilizer, these guys, this bio gold, it's uh, single digits in its numbers. It's five, five, five on uh, on the three elements that we always look for on our um, on our nutrients. And it's also organic. So if that matters, if that matters to you. Um, but this guy, for instance, it certainly is. It looked, it was yellow when I got it. It probably was not being fed so that the needles would be smaller for sale. And, uh, but yeah, we're about to go through and I guess we'll probably, I haven't decided what I'm doing with this guy. I decandled it last year. Right now it's looking so good. I'm kind of hesitant to mess with it. Uh, you don't always have to decantle. Even the ones that you decantle, you don't always have to do that every year. I know this is supposed to be about fertilizer, but for those who have pines that uh, are in a bonsai pots and can be decantled, that's something that you also do depending on the health of the tree. If the tree has had a bad time or a bad year or has been just decantled all the time for numerous, numerous years, it's absolutely okay to uh, take a year off this guy is going on going on a, a year off after it had uh, a case of the sniffles last year that just just almost had the tree turn red uh this guy won't it will not it it's had its uh it's had its little cubes picked up uh june first couple of days of june and we're just waiting probably another week or so and then I'll go through and do and do its little candle cut and we'll probably do a little bit of needle reduction there. We might do a little bit of needle reduction here to try to make sure we keep enough balance to try to make sure we don't start casting off anybody but right now the tree is greening up. I'm still feeding it. I will continue to feed this guy around around uh, all year round to try to uh, increase its vigor throughout the year it's looking quite a bit better than it had but we still have work to do i don't i believe we're out of the woods as far as that's concerned but i also believe i've still got a few years to go to get this guy back um to a level i want to see it and to that end feeding is a great way to start by uh watching this tree be perfect and thinking it's perfect don't mess with it I didn't, I wasn't proactive about the feeding. I wasn't, uh, I was trying to find my balance on the watering, which means it was probably went from under to over, from under to over before I got that right. And um, that made for a weaker tree. The other side is a 75 year old tree and it is uh, a cork bark tree and an older cork bark tree is uh, more fragile. You are not supposed to decandle those every year. In the first year I had it, I decandled it. The first two years and that second year, that summer, is when I had numerous problems. And there are people who, whenever they tell you about that, they go, so if you've ever decandled 
your old uh, Japanese cork bark and had it almost die on you or die on you and you had just decandled it that year, there's going to be, he goes, there's going to be people going, oh, so that's what happened. And so that might have been the problem I had with this guy uh, was that I broke that little don't decandle elderly Japanese cork bark black pines. Um, every year in a row, give them every other year or something, if they're healthy for that. So that's just a little something about that. Uh, but those of you uh, who have been here for the lecture about the feeding, the oaks will get fed year-round. Both of them will get fed year-round. Uh, the maples, as far as I know, I'm still trying to get it to grow more canopy and stuff. I will be cutting back some of this at some point. But right now, we'll be feeding this as we will be our uh, Dawn Redwood and our cypress trees. Our cypress trees are making a lot of ramification for us. We want it to make a lot of roots. We want it to make a lot of girth. We want all these things to catch up and make tree parts. So um, as far as there, what's going on with them, it's in a, a training pot and we will still, which means it's not technically in the bonsai vortex, but um, I always feel really good about the way these things look. I get a really, I get a cool rush looking at these guys and being a part of their progress. But that's kind of a quick spill. Once you figure out what you're supposed to do with the uh, black pines, feeding the other stuff, it's just a matter of finding out whether it's more or less that, as far as I'm concerned, it, it that might not be the right way to look at it. But this really wasn't that complicated. We're going to cut the candles in June. Then we stop and, and some time during the month of June. Then we stop feeding them 15, 30, 25, 30 days. 30 days is what you should do before you before you do that process. Um, if they're in a bonsai pot. If they're not in a bonsai pot and you're not restricting the roots, if you're just cutting the candles so that you can... Um, so that you could just try to keep them from elongating too bad to keep the height down on a tree that you want to keep that you want to keep small then uh, or you want to increase the amount of bag loads you can feed that you can feed that year around the same as but when they're when you've restricted the roots and the idea then is to cut the candles so that you can um, um, dictate the needle size then in those instances, you would definitely back off 30 days before you do that process. That's really all there is to it. It's not, it's not, um, it's, it's not all that. So there's a little quick look at, a uh, little quick look at Simply P. I think it's looking pretty good. I started using my new Hoss watering can today and, uh, that has been very nice it makes up it, it i like the stream and i'm able to get in and water this without tearing it down i had been spraying it up until this morning this morning was the first time i actually was able to use a watering can and i used a little hoss hoss watering can that i got uh at our hardware store what did i do with it oh it's next to the i filled it up again i haven't brought it in i used it to uh water the seedlings that's where it is anyway that's our spill that's our spill on fertilizing the japanese black pines i go with the simple simple uh single digit um fertilizer and it's uh low numbers five 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 across the board so it's balanced nothing is going to you know necessarily elongate one dose is usually on a on a larger tree one dose would be four of these like in the palm of your hand and for every uh, uh four square inches you would uh put one of those so my larger pots like those those get like four little cubes on every corner same with the cork bark oak. These, I put four little cubes stationed out on all four corners of all three trees. Uh, it's not going to go completely nuts. It's going to make sure they've got enough food. 
but look at those colors and look how lush and look how productive everything is. That's it that's really picked up the game there and it's picked up the uh it's picked up the foliage production on these trees a lot when I started feeding that one little act. So this is a little video that's gonna tell you that where we've kind of just let you in on what it is we use. Of course, we're not making anything off that or anybody else for that matter. But um, that's what we use and how we use it. So yeah, it's not really, it's not really that hard. And it's also a great preventative. The first thing that happens a lot of times when you find yourself trying to fix something that happened to one of your trees, what happened first was they got susceptible by getting vulnerable, by getting weak, and uh, head that off with, uh, with greener, happier trees. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Uh, this is our, uh, this is our uh, Friday drop, and uh, we'll probably do, we'll probably drag something in and work on it tonight, kind of like uh, we like to do on Friday nights and weekends. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.